But for now, we are in the commodities uh, market segment with Dume Biolu for the second time this week. And uh, we see the U.S. still pulling a lot of uh, uh, power in the global space. No wonder uh, BRICS <laughs> is so passionate about having an alternative currency yeah. or at least mm. trading more in local in their yeah. local currency yeah. because we see whatever happens now we're expecting some personal expenditure data from the united states mm -hmm. and investors are looking that way and the market is you know yeah. holding on you know so it's so much power that we see the u.s uh, have over everything everything that has <laughs> to do with the dollar yes i mean it's always going to i think it will continue to be this way for quite quite a while simply because um the global financial system is hinged against this currency and it will take a while before countries start diversifying their revenue base and their external reserves away from this and when we think of how easy it is to convert other local currencies to the u.s to the u.s dollar there is that tendency that this will definitely remain for for quite some time speaking on the um BRICS summit that just happened we've seen that um, um, BRICS has always come out with very strong, um, um, very strong resolves or strong um, uh, um, I ideas that they always want to develop. But oftentimes, implementation has always been very weak. And then when you look at the countries that make up BRICS, you see that there, there are still tensions within these countries. For if, let, let's start with Russia that has a lot of sanctions, you know, against it. It will definitely take some time before they can actually move the needle for anything BRICS actually get, um, get a resolve on. Then you look at the issue between China and Russia, China and India. India. They still have that tussle over um, the borders and China, India is actually you know, being very protectionist towards Chinese goods coming into their country, Chinese products coming into their country. And if within BRICS there's still this, there's a lot of tension, the possibility of their resolves coming to play or coming to life, there's a huge question mark there and over the years we've seen that they've always want they've always wanted this but but the but the chances of but the, but the um implementation has been very very weak and we haven't really seen this come to, fru to come to fruition but then again we're living in a very different world today um russia is face facing sanctions china and russia are, are you know they're they're, be they're best of allies as of today um india is also facing high I prices i don't know if you saw that story that india bought a billion <laughs> barrels of oil mm. and paid with rupees yes that's a whole lot, lot. That, that, that's a whole lot so ex exactly what i'm trying to add the times are very very different and so even if we've seen a BRICS that hasn't been so um um tough and very resilient with its resol with its resolutions we're seeing that the world is very different today and there just might be that glimmer of hope for them to see how much they're able to move the needle with the certain results that they've made i mean they're also expanding um saudi arabia um is now part yeah. of of, from of, of January, BRICS. Six yes, from more January. Countries, Saudi six Arabia, more countries, Australia, exactly. Egypt, so, yeah, and we're seeing UAE, a lot more countries. The mighty oil. Oh, UAE. They are now part of BRICS. So we're seeing that um, the, di the game is beginning to change. While, while, while there might be um, hiccups in terms of implementation or, or how far they would go to you know, um, diversify away from, from uh, um, the US dollar, what would Clearly, times are different, and we just fingers crossed to see how well all yeah. of this, all of this plays out. Interesting times, really. Very interesting. In the world and you today. know, they just did their bonds for their development bank. Yes, they just concluded yes. that, so they yes. have more money, and mm. they say they want to help African countries. countries. Yeah, you know. But when they say that, my mind is, do will a country like China just come on bricks just to help African countries? Mm. I mean, countries have their needs. Mm -hmm. And these are countries from different parts of the world, different levels of um, development. When you mm -hmm. look at China, it's different mm -hmm. compared to India, compared to South Africa, mm -hmm. you know, compared to, it, they're just so different. Mm -hmm. And even with the new countries coming on board, the UAE, the Saudi Arabia, the Australia, they hardly have things in common. Come on, yes. you see, yeah, you think you yeah. tie them together. Exactly. Except the passion to, mm. you know, create an alternative for West. Uh, yeah, systems. yeah, yeah. So th th this, those are like the other um, foundational issues that come up when we look at um, um, BRICS and the countries involved. Um, I guess one thing that could uh, sum up as a similar ground for all of them is that they are all emerging market countries, right? And while they're very diverse in their um, 
in their federal rule. For, for instance, you see the um, leadership of China being more um, autocratic than um, um, China, Russia being more, to, being more autocratic than India that is really, you know, championing democracy or even the African countries that they are trying to help looking, um, looking to be more um, uh, um, um, democratic in their, in their rule. So those are some of the diversities that, do, that does come to play and their mode of, of approach towards policy making. But at the end of the day, and this is not me championing for BRICS here, but <laughs> and what, what, what we're trying to do is look at what, we'll look at what BRICS is today, what, what it was before, and what is happening today to, that, is, that is fueling all of these conversations around how effective BRICS would be in today's, in today's world. And when you look at how much China has invested in Africa, and how much Russia is planning to invest in Africa, and how much um, um, India, Brazil, and all of them are trying to have more ties with um, African countries, you see that there is that um, common ground. Um, and the, the type of investments, that's a question for another day, but what we're saying is these countries are looking to invest in Africa. And African countries now, we're seeing that um, intentionality towards getting Invest investments that are more beneficial in terms of um, value addition. We're seeing, we've seen the, the, and the lasting government, value. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We've seen the government of Kenya be very, very, very vocal about it. We've seen the government of Zimbabwe actually being very vocal about it. Zambia as well. So simply because now we're more aware of the resources that we have and how. Um, useful these resources are in today's world. For example, we look at uh, um, resources like copper, resources like lithium, resources like nickel. A Africa has vast um, uh, um, um, reserves of these resources and the West does need these resources. So while we might look at it as somewhat of a power play between the West and you know, China for world dominance and all, if we play our cards right in Africa, we should actually benefit from this because yeah. the investments are very much necessary. Yeah, but that's when we keep uh, put our house in, in good order. I mean, now that we're having cool we, we aren't done. Yeah, now it's, we have yeah. Gabon, you know, yes, yes, uh, yes. on the military rule. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, I, I saw videos. I mean, if you watch a lot of uh, videos, mm. you see that the people are actually happy mm. about it. Yeah. I mean, while coup is illegal, mm. uh, but it seems the people are saying something Think, right yes, there that yes. we need a change, mm -hmm. a kind of family mm -hmm. rule and individual rule. Is it really democratic? Mm -hmm. And remember, Gabon is on OPEC. Is a member yes, of OPEC. Yes, I was just going yeah. to add that. So this, it's it's one of the um, issues actually fueling fuel prices today because there are concerns that this coup could mean a disruption to oil supply from Gabon, and that is definitely fueling market sentiments. So alongside um, the U.S. crude inventories, we also saw that um, um, coup in Gabon have an impact on oil prices, as well as um, Saudi Arabia. Um, coming out to say that they might increase their um, October um, um, prices. Yeah, October, yes, increase their cost up, up until October, and then we'll see all prices from their side decline, and then prices also increase. But moving out, uh, uh, moving out from um, the oil, the oil uh, market dynamics, exactly what you've said about um, sentiments looking more positive from the people of Gabon towards the coup. And that just um, brings to mind how um, democracy seems to be failing in terms, of, uh, in terms of how far um, it has gone in African countries to actually bring forth the gains that people hoped it will get. Now, this is not me, again, advocating for um, um, the military regime, but when you see that people are happy about certain things that seem, that certain things that should be, they should be unhappy about, that just goes to tell you how much the system has failed them. And that distrust in system comes out to play when, when you see things like this happen. So um, how far this would go to affect African countries um, negatively, it, there's still a huge question mark there because we don't know how much it will, it, it would actually um, either help African countries or deter them because in the past we've seen that military coups like this didn't, wasn't so beneficial. Exactly. It, it always became a very um, toxic environment for the people and even in terms of policy making and development, um, and, and development as well. Um, but at the same time, we've, we've embraced 
embraced democracy. This country has embraced democracy. And the long-lasting gerontocracy that has actually pervaded this, these countries have actually not given them any much benefit as well. So they seem um, to say, so they seem to say okay, should we... Yeah, so while, while there's a lot of question mark and heat around it... Um, we don't know. There's still, there's still, in terms of um, economic, economic policies, development, growth, there's still a huge question mark there. If we use history to judge what could happen, what could be, but at the same time, like we said, it's very interesting times in very the world today. Yeah. yeah. Well, bef just before we let you go, uh, what's happening to domestic uh, commodities? Yeah, we're seeing a mixed movement in prices. Um, we've seen um, the price of yam, you know, I'm looking more like it's going to ease um, simply because new yams are out now. And when that, ha when that typically happens, we see the price of yams um, ease out. We're seeing that uh, um, other commodities like rice, uh, the price of rice is looking to be more um, expensive. And this is... Uh, also like a filtering effect from India's protectionist um, approach to its um, supply of rice. But at the same time, domestic, we're seeing that local rice is still very much, um, still very much in the market, um, even though um, demand for it is simply um, is looking, looking quite low. But at this time, we're seeing a lot of income and substitution effect come into play with the demand for, for rice. So people are going for cheaper substitutes right now. So we, we might see an increase in demand for um, local rice go, going, going forward. Um, tomatoes as well, tomatoes, peppers and onions, those um, commodities, seasonality is also still taking, taking an effect there. Um, but the expectation is that, you know, coming out from the, when the harvest season now, so we could see um, an increase in supply from those commodities and it's um, a minimal decline in, in, in their prices. Mm. Yeah, thank you. But you know that India situation is, mm -hmm. is a problem. They're being too protectionist yes. at this time. Yeah, but time. you can't really blame them. <laughs> Indonesia did this earlier, earlier in 2022. Yeah. Yeah, they're just trying to protect their domestic citizens at, okay. at this point. Yeah, I hope Nigeria can do that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Dumi Yuluwali, senior thank analyst you. with Financial Derivatives Company. Thank you for your thank time. Thank you so much. Yeah.